Imagine a Formula One car flying down the track at speeds exceeding 200 miles per hour, and suddenly, the driver slams the brakes before a hairpin turn. Within seconds, the car decelerates to a crawl, and you can almost smell the heat from the tires as they grip the asphalt. Now, how does a car come to such a smooth stop without losing control, especially under such intense conditions? The answer lies in carbon fiber disc brakes, an innovation that redefined braking in high-performance vehicles. From the world of Formula One racing to high-end supercars like the Porsche 911 GT3 and McLaren P1, the power of carbon fiber brakes is the gold standard in performance braking systems. So how exactly are they made? Let's break down the steps that transform basic carbon fibers into the stopping force behind some of the world's fastest cars. Step 1. Material Selection Before the first spark of production, manufacturers face a critical decision, selecting the backbone of their high-performance systems, carbon fiber. But this isn't just any choice. Carbon fiber isn't merely prized for its exceptional strength. Its true marvel lies in its ability to endure searing, high-temperature conditions. In the world of motorsports and elite vehicles, where braking systems are pushed to their absolute limits, this property could mean the difference between victory and catastrophe. But not all carbon fibers are created equal. Manufacturers use carbon fibers made from polyacrylonitrile, or PAN, which offers superior tensile strength and heat resistance compared to other fibers. The carbon fiber sheets used for disc brakes are produced by weaving together strands of pan-derived fibers. These fibers are arranged in crisscross patterns, creating layers that enhance the mechanical properties in multiple directions. By ensuring strength in all planes, manufacturers can build brake discs that can resist the immense stresses of hard braking, even at temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees Celsius equivalent to 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit. For example, a Porsche 911 GT3 can generate immense heat during a track session, but thanks to the carefully selected fibers, its brakes continue to perform at optimal levels, even under extreme heat. Moreover, the lightweight nature of carbon fiber reduces the car's overall weight, increasing its agility and speed. And before you get lost in all this brake magic, Remember to hit like and subscribe, because unlike your car, our content doesn't have any brakes. It just keeps going. Step 2. Layup and Resin Infusion After selecting the highest quality carbon fibers, manufacturers begin the process of assembling them into a brake disc. This starts with the layup stage, where sheets of carbon fiber fabric are layered on top of each other. Each layer is carefully arranged to ensure maximum strength and performance. In a racing brake, the orientation of the fibers is critical. Manufacturers arrange the fibers in different directions to give the final product multi-directional strength. This ensures that the brake can withstand various stresses without deforming or cracking. But the fabric alone is not enough to create a solid structure. That's where resin infusion comes in. A high-performance resin, typically an epoxy, is applied to each layer of the carbon fiber. The resin acts as a binding agent, ensuring that the layers remain firmly bonded under extreme heat and pressure. The resin helps distribute the forces evenly across the brake disc during use, preventing cracks and fractures. To ensure the resin penetrates every fiber and eliminates any trapped air bubbles, the resin-infused layers are subjected to vacuum compression. This ensures that the brake disc has a uniform structure without weak spots. Precision is key in this step. Any air pockets or uneven resin distribution could lead to a catastrophic brake failure in high-performance scenarios. Step 3. Curing and Solidification With the layers of carbon fiber fully infused with resin, the brake disc is ready to move into the curing stage. In this phase, the resin-soaked carbon fiber is placed inside an autoclave, a large industrial-grade oven. The purpose of the autoclave is to cure the resin, transforming the malleable layers into a rigid, solid structure. The autoclave not only heats the material to temperatures as high as 400 degrees Celsius, but it also applies high pressure 
to ensure that the resin hardens uniformly. This step is pivotal because the extreme conditions in the autoclave mimic the real-world stresses that the brake will encounter. The heat solidifies the resin, binding the carbon fiber layers into a cohesive whole. At the same time, the pressure forces out any excess resin and air bubbles, ensuring that the brake disc is free from imperfections. Once the curing process is complete, the disc is allowed to cool slowly, which helps to prevent warping or internal stresses from forming within the material. The result is a brake rotor that is not only incredibly strong, but also lightweight and heat resistant. For an F1 race or a high speed lap in a McLaren P1, this means consistent braking power, lap after lap. Without this curing process, brakes wouldn't be able to survive the intense forces and heat generated during hard stops from high speeds, such as those experienced in a Ferrari 488 or an Aston Martin DB11. Step 4. Machining the Brake Disc After the curing process, the brake disc has taken on its solid form, but is far from a finished product. The next step is machining, where the raw brake rotor is meticulously shaped and refined to meet the exact specifications required for high-performance use. In motorsport and luxury car manufacturing, every fraction of a millimeter matters. This is where precision CNC, or computer numerical control, machines come into play. The machining process involves cutting the disc to the perfect size, thickness, and shape. Manufacturers must ensure that the surface is completely flat and smooth to allow for even wear during braking. Slots and vents are also machined into the disc to improve airflow and cooling, essential for maintaining performance during high temperature braking. These design features help dissipate heat and prevent the brake from overheating, which could lead to brake fade or failure. But the work doesn't end there. Once the machining process is complete, the brake disc is meticulously balanced to prevent vibrations during use. Any imbalance, no matter how small, can cause shaking, which can reduce braking efficiency or even damage the car. For vehicles like the Porsche 911 or the Bugatti Chiron, the importance of perfectly balanced brakes cannot be overstated. Step 5. Pyrolysis and Carbonization With the disc machined and shaped, it now undergoes a process known as pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is essentially the transformation of organic materials into carbon by subjecting them to extremely high temperatures in an oxygen-free environment. In the case of carbon fiber disc brakes, this process converts the resin, which holds the layers of carbon fiber together, into a carbon matrix. The matrix strengthens the structure of the disc and enhances its ability to withstand heat and stress. The pyrolysis process occurs in a special furnace, where the brake disc is exposed to temperatures of around 2000 degrees Celsius. The resin undergoes carbonization at this temperature, transforming it into pure carbon. This process gives the disc its heat-resistant properties and ensures that it can survive the extreme temperatures generated during hard braking. The result of this process is a disc that is not only incredibly light, but also extremely durable. It can withstand the intense friction and heat generated during a high-speed stop without cracking or warping. Step 6. Oxidation and Anti-Oxidation Coating Carbon fiber disc brakes, despite their impressive heat resistance, are not immune to oxidation. Over time, exposure to high temperatures and oxygen can cause the carbon fibers to degrade. To protect against this, the disc undergoes an oxidation process followed by the application of an anti-oxidation coating. Oxidation is controlled in a specialized environment where a thin protective layer forms on the surface of the disc reducing the rate of wear. However, high-performance car manufacturers, like those producing brakes for Bugatti or Koenigsegg, take it a step further by applying a ceramic-based anti-oxidation coating. This coating adds an additional layer of protection, ensuring that the carbon fiber brakes can withstand the most extreme conditions without losing performance. Ceramic coatings are highly resistant to heat, 
and prevent the oxidation process from taking place even during repeated high temperature braking. This coating process ensures that the brakes remain effective for longer periods, reducing the need for frequent replacements and maintaining optimal performance throughout the car's lifespan. For a vehicle like a Porsche 911 or Ferrari 488, which are often pushed to their limits on both roads and tracks, this coating is essential in maintaining the brake's integrity and performance. Step 7. Ensuring Perfection The final step in the manufacturing process is perhaps the most critical – testing. After all the hard work that goes into crafting a carbon fiber brake disc, manufacturers must ensure that each disc meets the highest standards of quality and performance. This involves both mechanical and thermal testing to simulate the intense conditions that the brakes will face in real-world scenarios. Each brake disc undergoes rigorous testing to ensure it can handle extreme temperatures, high speeds, and sudden stops. Manufacturers use specialized equipment to replicate the conditions of a racetrack, pushing the brakes to their limits. They measure factors like heat dissipation, braking power, and wear resistance. Discs that don't meet the stringent criteria are discarded or sent back for further refinement. For high-performance vehicles, the quality control process is non-negotiable. When a Bugatti Chiron or Porsche 911 is barreling down the highway at high speeds, the driver must have complete confidence in their braking system. This final stage guarantees that the carbon fiber disc brakes will deliver the stopping power and durability that these supercars demand. So, do you think carbon fiber disc brakes are worth the hype? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you found this production process interesting, make sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more fascinating breakdowns.